And we have got a weird show for you today, don't we? Mm-hmm. I mean, weirder than usual. I am in Cleelum, which is very near Vinny's house. Well, Vinny is in my house, and Craig yeah. is in Puyallup. What are you doing in Cleelum, Washington? It's a goddamn good question, Vinny. All right. Okay. Well, what happened was my. Uh, uh, so it, it's a long story. Jim Ross is looking into the camera. He says, Where I come from, we call a match like that. A slobber knocker. And Vincent Mann just rolls his eyes and says, yes, in addition to the slobber knocker. Like, that's where it, it went off the rails right there. But then we're like 30 minutes into the show, and I don't remember what the match was. But uh, he goes, what was that word you used, Jim? Slobber knocker? Oh, and afterwards we get a shot of uh, a bunch of grown men and women, adults, standing up and all, boo, give me a thumbs down in unison. And I thought, who is the production geek that coached them to do this? Probably that damn idiot. <laughs> I won't mention his name. Thurman Plug is still coming. He must be taking the scenic route. It is ironic that the guy who's giving us a race car driver is that it's taking a long time to get here. The NFL had a new television deal going from CBS to Fox. But don't you worry, Vince says. The World Wrestling Federation will not be taking those spots on CBS. Because, yeah, that'd be terrible news to get a <laughs> Sunday afternoon show on CBS. Right. Yes, in fact, they have no interest in this whatsoever. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> Who's the bad guy in Aladdin? He's even got the curly mustache. Jafar. That can... Yeah. That yeah. guy's evil. That guy's a dick. What's his name? Gafar? Jafar. Jafar. Oh, Jafar. Jafar. Yeah. Jafar. Jafar. <laughs> He's getting into I trust SNL him Jafar skit. as I can throw him. Oh, who right. The National Weather Service is telling me we have a windstorm that should be beginning at any time with gusts to 50 miles an hour. Brian Danielson and Ethan Page had an awesome wrestling match. He wins with, of all things, the Regal Stretch, which zero yeah. announcers pointed out. So my presumption is they weren't sure if they should mention William Regal's name since he's no longer in the promotion. He's gone. Right. So I think that's what happened. There is a scene where Walter is sitting there and he is just staring at Jesus through his yellow aviator sunglasses. I want you to watch that scene. And then I want you to go back and watch Trent staring at Orange Cassidy through his same exact yellow aviators. That's a good it's call. It's fucking uncanny. It's uncanny. Hook versus Balaam Lynx. What an NXT name that was. Oh, no, no, no. There's no one in NXT with a name as great as Balaam Lynx. That might end up dragging Lee's name. Balaam Lynx. He'll wear a, a, a tiger mask or something like that. Renee interviews the Mogul Affiliates which is Swerve and Parker Boudreaux and another person. Still no name. Renee even says, I don't even know who you guys are. Omega is on top of a thing. He hits Phoenix with a one-winged angel through some sort of platform. He gets the pin on Phoenix seconds before Matt taps out to the Brutalizer. I thought that was a very, very clever finish that they did right there. The acclaimed do a battle rap in response to Sanjay Dutt's rap last week. You know, these were, Vinny, fighting words. There's no way that Sanjay cannot have a, a comeback to this. Or, better yet, a battle rap. And he gives Wardlow a haircut. Or, as Tony Schiavone screams, he cut the ponytail! That man bun of his! <laughs> Which is what it's not a man bun, it's a ponytail, Tony! It's not a bun. Crying out loud. It's not a bun. Adam Cole a man who a man had bun. a man bun once. It has been announced. Okay. It is Darby Allen versus Samoa Joe. For the TNT title in Darby's hometown of Seattle, Washington. Well, that should be fun. And I think that he should win that title. This guy's telling me he's got a hundred fucking jackets, and I'm supposed to care that his jacket got stolen by this bloke? It didn't even occur to me that his jacket had been stolen. I thought he was telling me that he was going to be a serious wrestler and stop wearing the jacket now. That was the message no. I got from the promo earlier. She's you weren't there, paying attention. And I'm fine with that. Your mystical darkness has pushed me to my breaking point. You have awakened an unfamiliar yet barbaric fire inside my soul. What? What the shit? I would rather watch a bad match than a boring match right now. The wrestling gods heard me and delivered me Lash Legend versus Lyra Valkyria. I was a big dude and I was a clumsy, clumsy, clumsy dude. But I could set my feet and stand there and let small people revolve around me. I did this better than Last Legend did. 
They fell down a lot. This is such low self-praise, Vinny, <laughs> that you did no, something better no, 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 than no, no. Lash this Legend. Is not, this is not self-praise. It's Lash Legend to Burial. She is worse than me. Vic pleads his case. Like, you don't understand how important this is to Fallon Henley. This bar is where she lost her first tooth. There's, what? There's a silence. I'm thinking, she, she lost her first tooth. And then Booker T, at the top of his lungs, bellows the exact words. I'm thinking, what the hell was she doing at a bar losing her first tooth? I like the match. I thought it was pretty good. But man, let me tell you, it has been a long time. Since we had such a disparity between Dynamite and NXT. Yes. This Dynamite was great, and this NXT was downright bad. And I have been a fan of this show for a long time. Hopefully next week, it will get back on track. <laughs>